Hello everyone, this is Christina Tare Singham, Quality Assurance Engineer, Zaizi. So today I'm going to talk to you about distributed testing and effective reporting. So we use Selenium WebDriver to do our test automation and we use Selenium Grid to do distributed testing. And we use Selenium Grid mainly to test multiple uh, browsers and operating systems. So basically, the idea of Selenium Grid is to use a hub and a couple of nodes to run your code. So your code would basically be in your hub and then you'll be running the tests on various different nodes with uh, different browsers and different operating systems. Why and when do we use Selenium Grid? So when you have multiple browsers to be tested, if there is a requirement to be tested on multiple operating systems, then you have to use Selenium Grid. That will make your life easier. You, do, you don't want to run uh, the same test again and again on different browsers, but just in a click of a button, run it on different browsers and different operating systems. And say you have different uh, test cases, innumerable test cases, and you want to run them together, then you can break it down into different pieces and run it on different nodes, which will again save time for you. So moving on. Okay, so now we'll have the demonstration on how we can configure Selenium Grid on the hub and our nodes. So first you will have to have the Selenium server standalone in your system. So first you will have to download it from your Selenium web page. So yes, as shown below, you can now run java-jar and run your Selenium standalone server, which will basically launch the hub with the IP address and the port. Yes, so now you can see that the hub is up and running. You can then go to the grid console, which is localhost 4444, which will give you the details of the hub. It'll give you the port. It'll give you all the other details that you need. Next, we need to configure the nodes. So for different browsers, we need to configure different ways of the node. So especially uh, when it comes to uh, Chrome and IE, there is a different configuration. But here, now we select the jar, the same, same jar that we have downloaded. We paste it on the console. And now you can see that it has launched a Selenium grid node. And it has been connected to the hub that we had configured initially. Let's go to the hub now. And now you can see that with that specific port we had given 5566, it's configured. Go to the console and I'm just refreshing it. And now you can see that the particular node has been configured and the port and the IP has been registered with your hub and the hub IP. Next, we will be configuring Chrome. So Chrome, there is a difference between what we had done for Firefox. You will have to specify the browser, but again, it's the same jar. And you will have to say the browser name, the version, the platform that you're using, and especially the web driver, that it has to be saved in the system. For the Chrome driver should be saved in the system. And yeah, I've mentioned the port that is 5567. Yeah, and now I'm running that. It's saved. Yes, and you can see that it has been saved on the same hub. So it's connected to the same hub. Yes, and if you see the hub, you can see the same port. You can now go to the console and see that Chrome, specifically Chrome, has been uh, registered for that port, 
5567. Moving on, we'll be doing the same for IE. Just that we'll have extra uh, parameters that will be passed and the web driver for specifically for IE which will be saved so you need to give the location. I'm now putting it in the command prompt and yeah that is configured to the same hub. Going to the hub it's configured there you can see 5568 and now on the console you can also see that specifically for IE the node has been configured. So therefore now we have all the nodes, all three nodes configured for different browsers. Next I'm going to show you how to run the test from your hub on your nodes. So this is mainly I'm just going to show you what we do on Firefox but you can use the same for Chrome and IE. So first I will explain how the code is. We have a different uh, types of parameters that we pass for each test case. So that I sh it's shown here and then I run with those parameters. I run the test cases. So this is basic, uh, basic J unit and then you run the parameters. So each parameter is taken and it is the test has run to yeah and you then get the before class where you start configuring your um, selenium grid so you give the node URL and then you move on and you give the capabilities so first you say the browser so here I'm going to say Firefox but below you can see I've also mentioned Chrome and IE which has been commented. Then ignore Zoom settings is very important especially for IE because mainly IE there had been we had faced issues so make sure you use that and Vista is the platform and any version and the other one yes this is very important native events uh, should be false especially for IE. Now you call the remote web driver with the node URL and you use it as your driver. So that is where you actually call your web driver and then you put the URL into the driver for it to run. So basically that's it when it comes to the web driver and finally you need to close the driver once all the test cases are over so I put it in after class. So now we are ready to run it as a maven test and yeah it's running now now you can see on my virtual box chrome <laughs> yeah so you can see it running the second list of parameters are run and it says yeah so the whole test is over and you can also see it on your node console and also on the logger so next we are going to move on to the reports which is very helpful when it comes to continuous integration uh, we need to have when we run selenium grid the main purpose of it is uh, ideally to run it on continuous integration on different systems so we need to have all our reports stored because it's probably going to run overnight so extent report is very helpful it runs on both test ng and junit so now i'll just show you how we can run the reports okay so first it's the maven project so we will have to uh, go into the maven repository and get the dependency values for extend reports so I'm copying it and I'm going to put it into my pom xml so I'm saving it there
Yeah, so now moving on to the test. So I'm calling the extent reports there. So yeah, extent is equals to new extent constructor. And in the before class, I'm putting in the part where I want to save the report. So since it's Firefox, I'm giving the specific path as Firefox. And then I'm also giving the document title, the report title, that is as regression and the report headline. So these values will all appear on my report. So next, we also need log statuses, like if it's in for whether it's a step or it's a pass or a fail or a warning. So here you can see that I'm passing everything as info. So these values will come as my test steps. And then you can also see that finally I am giving pass if it's a pass test case. And then I will also give the screenshot. So it's better to have your screenshot saved. So I'm going to get the screenshot with the Selenium take screenshot, save it in a specific path. And then, yeah, since I use the same path as the report, I'm using relative and I'm attaching the screenshot. So yeah, and if it's failed, then it will mention as fail. With the screenshot also can be attached. So now I'm just going to change a few of my parameters because I want to show you how it looks when it fails. So I'm going to give something a wrong expected value so the test case is going to fail. And now we will run the test. And now you can see in the same way that the test is running on the virtual box because it's still configured to Selenium Grid. So it's running it on the node. And that was a failed test case. And this would be a pass. Now let's go and look at the report that has been generated. So it is in the Firefox folder and even the screenshots have been saved. So now you can see that the report HTML is available. So you can see the titles and the head headings we are mentioned and you can also see the pie charts of the pass and the fail and also the steps. So we just had two test cases, one passed and one failed. You can also extend your test cases and see each of the steps and you can also minimize. And when you go to a particular test case, you can see the info has come as te test steps there. And then you can see that it has failed because I, the expected value and the current value did not match. As you know that I changed it. And there you can see the screenshot attached. And you also can see the time that it started the test, it finished the test, and the time taken. And whether it has passed and failed, you can filter, pass, fail. And you can get execution info, like when did it start, when did it end, total tests, steps, the test that's passed and failed. and also the system details, the system that you use to run the whole test. Mm -hmm. All the values. Yeah, so that's about it, about the reports. So both Selenium Grid and Extent Reports go hand in hand because you obviously need a report at the end of all your uh, tests so that you can show the evidence of your tests most of the time Selenium Grid is used for continuous integration and mostly it's used 
uh, for nightly builds so you wouldn't be around and you would like to see the results uh thank you for joining us on board uh and listening to this webinar i hope you learned something out of this uh especially when it comes to continuous integration now it's good to use selenium grid and obviously without the reports you wouldn't be able to uh, give in your results or even find out where the where the issues are thank you once again have a nice day